So, Rue and Max, you are the directors of Negative Space, uh, one of the 10 animated shorts that is in contention for the Academy Award. First of all, congratulations on being shortlisted. Uh, what did you think when you heard the news that you had uh, made the cut? Well, thank you thank so Thank you much. very much. Um, yeah, I mean, we were, we're, the, the competition was so great, we were pretty blown away. Um, but yeah, we're just so excited and happy to be in contention and with the, the group of films that are uh, shortlisted. Well, congratulations again. Uh, tell us a little bit about the film. Where did the idea for it come from? Um, so we base it off of a poem, 150 words poem by Ron Corgi. And when we read, we were just immediately like in love with the poem. It was um, really perfectly written and it was so minimum, but we could easily imagine the whole world beyond. Um, so we immediately contacted Ron and we began developing. Mm -hmm. Well, what about it, uh, I guess, spoke to you or, or made you think that it would be a good subject for a short film? Well, it said something very true and honest about parent and child relationships, we felt, um, th the way relationships are often ritualized. Um, and we thought that because it was about a parent and child relationship, it was something that was universal that, that people could inject their own um, experiences into. Um, and we both had our own personal connections to it as well. So. Um, so my personal connection was, uh, it just reminded me a lot about my father, who is a, a pilot, and he had this list of what to pack, and he ritually, rigidly packed everything according to. So when reading the poem, I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's really my dad, and the relationship I had with my dad, and I do the same thing, and I have this packing list, and I go pretty intense exactly how and what to pack. And actually, Rue has nightmares about packing. <laughs> yeah, so packing is kind of like a love and also like this um, boiling nightmare or fear that I have. <laughs> I, uh, I, I wait to the last minute to uh, pack whenever I'm going on a trip, so I, I feel you. Um, <laughs> uh, the film is uh, done in stop motion animation, uh, which is a pretty painstaking process. Um, can you talk about the, uh, for, I mean, first of all, you, you to uh, or basically stop motion animators what makes you what um i guess about that style of uh of animation um i guess uh spoke to you and if that makes sense right so so for this particular project um we, we thought it had to be stop motion mm -hmm. um a big part of this the, the visual language of the film is texture the objects that are in the suitcase, the clothing, all of these small detailed um, things that are important to the, the characters' lives. We wanted people to feel that texture. So uh, for us, stop motion was the most logical and the, really the only way we could execute it. Um, what about for you? Um, I really love puppets and stuffed animals in general. It's it's, there's something magical, you know, like we, we have the main character here and he's not alive, but he becomes alive once the animators start touching and inject life. And, and I, I find it so magical that um, I think that's the reason why we're both in love with stop motion. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's a, a physicality to it, you know, that makes it really stand, a, dimensi a dimensionality to it that makes it stand apart uh, from other kinds of animation. Um, also, sure. you're able to, in a lot of senses, um, be sort of abstract with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and part, of, part of, you know, our approach with this particular film was to push the idea of space, right? Um, so early on in the, the character's relationship with his father, he feels very small. The father is taking up a lot of space in his life. And then later in the film, um, this, the father's small, the father is not taking up a lot of space in his life. And we felt that because of the way the camera and the light um, and the physicality of stop motion, it, it, would, it would really be able to emphasize and exaggerate that sense of space. Can you talk a bit about the uh, process of stop motion? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty painstaking process. This movie is about 
five and a half minutes long, I believe. So, I mean, how long did it take you? What was the process like? Sure. Um, so we spent about a year developing um, the, the story, the cinematography, and uh, the initial puppet. And then we spent uh, three months in constructing sets, props, and characters, three months shooting, and three months in post-production. So it was a total of almost two years, but intensively uh, nine months. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, talk a bit about, uh, I guess, sort of the um, how much uh, time it takes each day. I mean, you're, you know, to like move these people just a few feet. I mean, how, you know, it, it's a pretty intensive uh, process, right? Right. So, I mean, for most of the shots in the film, there were 12 photographs per second. Um, and we might get five seconds of animation done a day. If it's really complicated, it, it would be less than that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very painstaking. And um, with our particular schedule, we didn't have any time for reshooting. Wow. We just had to get everything right the first time. So um, our animators, Silvan and Eric and Ru and I, uh, uh, the whole team just had to get it right. And uh, there was a lot of pressure. And it, <laughs> it's just to, to make it the way we wanted it or, or to deal with it. What's there a... Oh, sorry. No, no, you go um, ahead. One I was surprised was how long it usually takes to set up the shot for the animator to begin. Right. So um, probably like the shot that took the most was um, the crowd with the funeral scene because there's just purely like so many characters. But it literally took two days to set up everything and then like three days to animate. And um, oftentimes the animators in this like black room for easily 12, 14 hours. And yeah. all of a sudden it's like really dark at night. And something else that might be interesting about stop motion is um, the sets move over time and the lights, um, when you turn them off and turn them back on, they never come back to the same exact <laughs> um, intensity. Mm -hmm. So you really want to get as much done in one take as possible. Um, you don't, you don't want to, have a shot go on for multiple days because things can go wrong. Right. Um, what were some of the uh, visual influences? Um, I mean, stop motion has been around for such a long time. So I'm curious, what were some films or some people that influenced you uh, in your own work? Right. So um, when we developed this film and when we've developed other projects in the past, we, we try not to look at other stop motion or other animation in general because we don't want the influence to be that direct. Mm -hmm. So for this particular project, we were looking at um, live action filmmakers like Ozu, mm -hmm. um, great Japanese filmmaker. Um, uh, we were looking at sculptors like Gregory, uh, uh, sculptors like Ron Muick, um, photographers like uh, uh, Gregory Crutzen. So we try to look at different types of art and not necessarily just lock ourselves into animation or illustration. I did not expect you to uh, name Ozu as an influence uh, for this movie. Uh, that was a surprise answer there. Um, how do the two of you work together? How do you collaborate on something like this? Um, we write and develop together. It's, it's really like a, a ping pong. Like we go back and forth, back and forth to the point that I don't know who came up with the initial idea because sometimes like you'll come up with an idea and then I would draw storyboards and at the end like I don't know who who's what right. but um, that's how we develop together and um, after that I usually take on the design um, and building sets props uh, characters and Max you take on the cinematography and um, color general yeah. color sense and for this project, we, we worked with other cinematographers and we worked with other set builders and animators. But yeah, uh, Rue really helped direct the set makers and I helped direct the, the cinematographer. And then animation portion, we kind of split. <laughs> what made you want to become animators? I mean, give us a little bit about your, your background and your path into this uh, line of work. I mean, what about it uh, appealed to you? Uh, well, for me, I, I'm born and raised in Japan, so I just read like too many comics. Um, so storytelling was always part of me growing up and 
Um, and also, I always loved crafting things out of recycling materials like cardboard. And so when I realized that I can combine those two elements of crafting and storytelling and make into animation film, it just opened up my world like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And um, luckily, that passion or the, the love hasn't disappeared yet. Mm -hmm. And I started um, thinking that I was actually going to be a live action uh, in live action filmmaking. But as soon as I started working with actors, I was like, I, I need to control this more. <laughs> so anim animation came out of necessity. St still wanting to tell stories with like cinematic language, but not being able to to work with uh, a big team. In you that say way. that right in front of the lead actor of your movie. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, well, he was pretty accommodating. He was, he was. Yeah, he's a great, great person to work with. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Uh, well, thank you both so much. Congratulations on the movie, and uh, best of luck at the Oscars. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much, Steph. Take well, care. You too. Have a